Whiskey is better shared, sure. But what if your friends just aren't into it? Go find new friends. No, okay, I'm kidding. But if you play your cards right, you can get those closest to you to see what you see in whiskey and to see what you love. My first tip, start smooth. Don't hit them over the head with a high corn mash or a high rye mash. Start off with the smoother, sweeter varieties of whiskey. So think of this in terms of your 40% ABV scotches. That 100% barley mash is going to be incredibly smooth. Or if you wanna try a standard American whiskey, go with something like Maker's Mart, a weeded bourbon. Those are traditionally a lot smoother. Now it's a good thing to note that these whiskeys are going to be smoother, lower in ABV or alcohol by volume, but as a result, that means that they're going to lack flavor compared to higher ABV cast strength whiskeys, as well as other mashes. And keep in mind that if you're setting up a whiskey tasting, start with the smoother, softer tasting whiskeys early in the evening. And trust me, this isn't just because it's lower in ABV and you don't wanna to go too hard too fast. In reality, higher ABV and harsher mashes, they have a tendency to blow out your taste buds and then you're unable to taste much of anything else. Those, we'll talk about later, need to be saved for the end. But these low ABV wheat mashes or these low ABV scotches, these are going to be whiskeys right at the beginning of the evening. They'll taste exactly how they're supposed to taste. My second tip, the sweeter, the better. For people just breaking into whiskey, it's traditionally a very foreign taste to them, especially if you're drinking it neat for the first time. There's a tendency to associate the whiskey with just straight grain alcohol. They're gonna taste that alcohol first and foremost. So it's a good idea to get them to immediately associate the taste of that whiskey to something that they're already familiar with, a familiar tasting profile that they taste every single day. A good example is sweetness. Sweetness can come out of both the mashes, but also the aging types. Sweetness, I have had very sweet rye mashes, such as the Sazerac rye from Buffalo Trace, but at the same time, sometimes rye mashes are very harsh, like cast strength will. It's kind of a hit or miss, and it depends on how they distilled the liquor. But a perfect go-to for sweetness, in my opinion, is a low ABV scotch that was aged in sherry casks or port casks. For sherry, you're going to get a light, fruity, a lot of times nutty flavor. It depends on the type of sherry cask they use, and it's going to bring out the natural sweetness of the barley mash. Two good options on my list for this is the Bunahaven 12 or the Glendronic 12. Glendronic 12 is one of my absolute favorites, and Glendronic is one of my absolute favorite scotch distilleries. For whiskeys that were finished in port casks, if you've ever had port, you know how thick and sweet it is. This sweetness goes right into the whiskey. Now, if you're looking for a scotch aged in port, I would try the Quinta Ruban from Glen Morangi. Glen Morangi creates a great base in their Glen Morangi 10, and then they age it in both sherry, there is a sherry variety, but as well as port. Personally, I prefer the port. But if you're looking for some bourbon, a straight bourbon whiskey from Virginia from Isaac Bowman. This one is port finished and it's absolutely delicious. I'm on the West Coast, and this is one of the first times I've actually seen it shipped out here. And for about $40, that's a pretty good deal. My next tip, watch the ABV. Don't go too high too fast. As whiskey lovers ourselves, we know that a cast strength, high ABV whiskey is something that we can hardly ever pass up. I get it, it's your favorite, but remember that the novice whiskey tasters, the new whiskey drinkers, they're not gonna feel the same way. What's gonna happen is they're gonna get this glass of whiskey, they're gonna smell it, it's gonna smell like alcohol. They're gonna taste it, it's gonna taste like alcohol. It's not gonna be fun for them and it's probably gonna turn them off. Within a few minutes, they'll probably be asking you for a pint glass and a bottle of beer. If you're trying scotch, I would stick to the basement level ABV of 40%. There are some really good scotches there to be had. Bourbon, you could go a little higher. My personal preference of bourbon is anywhere between 48 and 55%. But the point is, once you get them used to the tasting these lower ABV whiskeys, you can kind of work your way, inch your way towards 60% ABV. Get them into that 60% and you have Stag Junior, you have Willet, you have all these amazing varieties that you can share with them. The next tip, teach 
the smellies. Now the phrase smellies actually has a funny story behind it. I was about 45 minutes into the whiskey tasting and unfortunately I went a little high on the ABV a little too fast. And I was sitting there stumbling over my words, trying to think of the nose of the whiskey, the aromas, the smell. And the only thing that came out of my mouth was the ah, uh, smellies, the smellies, the smellies, yeah. Intoxication aside, the smell of the whiskey is incredibly important to actually tasting the whiskey. We've talked previously about our sense of smell and our sense of taste are connected through biology, but it's very true that it's critical to smell that whiskey before tasting it, especially for new folks. One of the coolest things about whiskey and one of the things your guests are probably more inclined to enjoy is trying to pick out those different tastes on the palate of the whiskey. And in order to do that, actually smelling those same notes before tasting it is going to make it remarkably easier. For example, Jack Daniel's single barrel is known for having a subtle taste of banana. Now this is decently hard to find, but it is there. And you can tell someone all day, taste for the banana, taste for the banana. And they might trick themselves into thinking, okay, yeah, I think, I think I've gotten the banana, but they might not have actually gotten it. A better idea is to smell the whiskey first. Try to get that banana on the nose. It's much more prevalent on the nose. And so then it will have an easier time following their senses when they taste the whiskey. Once you start tasting those deeper notes of the whiskey, they're gonna get past that alcohol smell. They're gonna get past that taste of alcohol. They're going to be able to fully and properly enjoy this whiskey. And because novice tasters are really only going to taste alcohol at first, this is a great strategy to get them past that first layer. And my last tip, ice, whiskey cubes, and water. Now, when I was over in Scotland, we toured a bunch of different distilleries and every single time we went into a distillery, two things happened pretty instantaneously. The first, they pegged us as Americans. The second is they informed us that while we prefer you drink our whiskey neat, we do have ice, whiskey cubes, and water to offer you. And then they stood there hoping to God that we did not accept their offer. It was a judgment-free zone that was full of judgment. I strongly believe that when you're drinking whiskey, you should be drinking it at room temperature and neat, especially as you pay more and more for a bottle of whiskey. That's how it was meant to be drank. But that's not to say that that's not how you enjoy it. And that's fine. It's okay if you like your whiskey a little chilled. If it's your bottle of whiskey, throw it in the fridge. Nobody should be offended. And when I'm doing whiskey tastes with friends, while I always have ice whiskey cubes and water on hand just in case, I do put down the base level of rules that, hey, first sip, first two, three sips, drink it neat. You might be surprised. I actually picked up a bunch of bottles of Stag Junior for a group of friends out in South Dakota one time. And that was my only request. Hey y'all, I know it's 60% ABV, but just give it a try. You might be surprised. And while half of the folks in the room actually ended up getting some ice from the vending machine and throwing it in there, that's fine. They do them. But the other half, they had only ever taken shots of whiskey and all of a sudden they were drinking a 60 ABV whiskey neat. They said it was the best whiskey they ever had. But overall, when putting on a whiskey tasting, it's critical to make the whiskey tasting interactive. Make sure you discuss the connection between our nose and our palate and how it can help bring out the flavors. It gets people involved. It's almost a mystery of trying to find those different notes. And if you have one, throw an old barrel stave out on the table. It's an interesting set piece and you can actually show off how they char the inside of the barrels before they throw the whiskey in. So next time you have the opportunity, time and whiskey to get your friends to start tasting, Start them smooth, and soon enough, they'll be just like you, spending way too much money on whiskey. So that's what I have for you all today. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Now, if you ever find yourself on a Sunday, Tuesday, or Thursday night not wanting to drink alone, right now I stream every single one of those evenings over on Twitch. Come have a drink with me. I'll see y'all later.